Hey, it's Ol, and welcome back to another episode of Warcraft Weekly, the dry, humorless show that does no April Fools because the haters killed the fun. Although those priest changes, oh, mwah, that was masterclass. Today's weekly is going to be almost entirely about patch 9.1 and the upcoming PTR in less than two weeks. News of it turned people's heads, almost as if the patch itself was going to release in a couple weeks, but slow down, folks. It's going to be a long wait, and in the meantime, there's lots to speculate, and dream of, and bitch over. First, let's get some TBC Classic news out of the way, because uh, y'all were really interested in that last week. Yeah, all things Warcraft my ass, right? Anyway, with the beta charging along, Blizzard introduced a new feature that will be out for Vanilla Classic in the future. It's called the Chronoboon Displacer. I'm not going to get into all the details too much, but what this does is take a snapshot of your world buffs, including its duration, and stores it in an item. You use the item, and then you get those buffs back along with the stored duration. The important takeaway is that this, at least so far, is the extent that Blizzard is willing to go when it comes to new content in WoW Classic. Things that make a player's routine a bit more manageable, aka quality of life stuff, and not things that alter or introduce new player behavior like a transmog or an achievement system or brand new story content which would be even more impactful. And that's it, let's get to the good stuff. The Chains of Domination patch is expected to hit the PTR on the week of April 13th, according to uh, some Blizzard post from the other day. Rate testing related stuff is going to come out about a week after that. Wow. Remember when I expected the 9.1 PTR to be announced by early January? Ha <laughs> Way to go, shill. So what sort of timetable are we looking at now? WoW had pointed out that patch 8.2, which was a pretty big patch in Battle for Azeroth, released only two months after its PTR opened, so a June release is not out of the question. Of course, it's 2021, and the WoW dev team isn't working under the same conditions. With 9.1 only being announced now, the expected release window, okay, the sort of maybe expected release window is going to be in the early part of July, and I think I'm being generous here. The 4th of July holiday takes place before the first Tuesday of that month. Without knowing how the pandemic is going to play out by then, there's a chance that a lot of people over at Blizzard's US offices will want to be away, and they can be for a change. So let's lean towards the following week on the 13th. That's going to mean that this first season of Shadowlands, or at least, you know, since Shadowlands launch, it's going to be eight months long until the new patch. We can doom speak over that all we want, but really no amount of bitching is going to make this patch come out any faster. Being wrong on my prediction, though, that'll make it come faster or slower. Well, let's look at 9.1 with what we've learned and experienced now and go over a couple of topics. What might we expect in this patch that hasn't been officially mentioned or fully fleshed out? And what would we like to see? Although actually, let me rephrase. What did we better see in 9.1 Blizzard? Because if you don't, I'm gonna make a video about this about how I'm very, very angry. With a new season slash tier come new profession recipes for armor crafters to get players into higher content. Although Shadowlands is different. Unlike previous expansions where we could get updated recipes to buy new gear, Shadowlands is most likely to just give us a new crafter's mark item sort of thing. When adding this to a crafting recipe, this will change, uh, this will raise the gear's item level to a certain point, whatever that elevated number is. Easy prediction that a new mark will be found in 9.1 content that needs to be found or unlocked. I find that a little bit dull. Uh, it makes me miss the old Warlords of Draenor system of upgradable gear. However, I know that crafting legendary reagents is the bread and butter of armor crafting professions these days. We just don't know how that's going to work in 9.1. Consider that anyone who can make a rank 4 legendary reagent 
probably put a lot of time and resources and gold into it. It makes sense if the WoW developers introduce four more ranks to repeat the cycle of building up these legendary skills, but it would be pretty bad if they were to add some sort of catch-up to get all crafters these rank four recipes. For example, uh, giving additional experience per craft to get everyone on an even footing. Although. Well, maybe it wouldn't be bad per se, it would be fair, but I think that there is a certain coolness looking at that one person on your realm who went through all the trouble of developing rank 8 bracers that no one has any hope of ever making, and now they've cornered that market for themselves. So what could be fair, but also respects the efforts that the 9.0 crafters put in? Here's an unlikely, yet possible idea that can fit, but probably to the detriment of us, the people that are buying these items. I can see a new armor reagent with ranks and everything being introduced in patch 9.1, so all the crafters have a fair start. However, players will have to possess or have on their person the rank 4 crafted legendary in order to upgrade their legendaries any higher. So my wimpy rank 1 helmet that I have over here needs to be upgraded with the 9.0 reagents all the way up to rank 4, and then I can use the 9.1 reagents to upgrade it to a 5 or maybe straight to an 8. <laughs> straight to 8, that rhyme. This does sound confusing and very unwieldy because frankly it is. I don't really see that happening, but you never know. And closely related to this, Soul Ash. Is it still going to be a thing? I'm going to assume yes. Will there be a Soul Ash catch-up in 9.1, and how much will these new upgrades cost? Now this I can speculate on, and actually it's easy enough to understand that this could actually happen. Soul Ash is probably going to go the route of Titan Residuum, uh, this, this reagent during Battle for Azeroth, but in case you missed it, here's how this new Soul Ash system is going to work using some pretend numbers. The cost of crafting ranks 1 through 4 that's not going to change. It's still going to be the 9.0 values. Right now, you get at most 1140 soul ash when running the two cell blocks. In 9.1, maybe the max amount of soul ash that you can get in Torgas will increase by a factor of 10. So that's like 11,400 ash, meaning that you can immediately make uh, two rank 4 legendaries, which cost uh, 5150 soul ash each, and you can make all that in a single week, which is a pretty nice catch-up. But what about ranks 5 through 8? What about the 9.1 ranks? Well, in that case, the cost of upgrading those will also increase by a factor of 10, so it'll give us the same time frame of how long it would take to craft a max item level legendary right now. The difference here, though, is obviously the catch-up. In 9.1, you'll easily be able to craft low-level legendaries because maybe you want to uh, remake them, like maybe you want uh, your favorite stats to have changed because the new meta. Maybe you want to wear your legendary in a completely different slot. This patch can offer a lot more flexibility here. It's going to be great for players wanting to play with more legendaries, and it's going to be great for crafters who are willing to sell those reagents. I only half expect there to be more legendaries introduced in 9.1, and we learned in interviews that there aren't any plans to raise the legendary equip limit, but those plans could always change. Two of the biggest concerns that I've tried to signal boost have been directed towards outdoor world content and raiding, which I know is kind of contradictory, but hey, who says that these playstyles are mutually exclusive, right? So let's take a quick look back. At the start of Shadowlands, raided PvPers have enjoyed what some call the best form of gearing. I just happen to call it the fastest. Patch 905 brought to the Mythic Plus world Valor Points, and an upgrade system to work on gear that's been earned. From observation, this has settled some of the gripes over Mythic Keystones, but given that this came in pretty late, and many players have already geared up through PvP anyway, it's hard to say just how great Valor is. I think Valor came in early as a sort of testbed for 9.1. It's a chance for Blizzard to get some feedback, to uh, you know, look at some data points, that sort of thing. I fully expect a number of tweaks to Valor, including adjusting Valor point drops depending on the difficulty, because right now we receive 135 Valor regardless of the key level. There's a chance and cross your fingers here, there's a chance that the thresholds to unlock gear upgrading abilities 
might be nerfed. Right now, the maximum upgrades are unlocked when clearing all the Shadowlands dungeons when you time a key at a level of 5, or 10, or 15, aka Keystone Master. I can kind of see this being lowered just a little bit, so it'll start at 5, and then the next milestone will be at 9, and then finally at 13. But maybe this, maybe these are just the predictions of a scrub. <laughs> Right over here. It's, it's here's my record. Okay, here's my record. You can tear me down. Not a big deal. So what about raiders? At the moment, they enjoy, or maybe they suffer through a system of raw luck without the chaotic perks of war forging and titan forging and corruption, which people don't miss, or do they? Anyway, I can point out a few possible changes, maybe good, maybe bad, for raiders in 9.1. One is to fold valor into the mix just like in Mythic Keystones. So here's some fake milestones. Let's pretend that you get some gear from uh, Raid Finder. You can upgrade that gear from Raid Finder with Valor one time, uh, all the way up to normal gear. It'll just kind of take a while. But if you happen to clear all of normal, then you'll be eligible to upgrade all your normal gear and only normal gear up to Heroic, and then Heroic to Mythic. And then Mythic Raiders, of course, they get the best gear anyway. I, I kind of have it in mind that you can only upgrade one gear level higher than the previous piece, but I mean, I could see a possibility where a player can, let's say they clear Mythic or they buy a Mythic carry, and then on their alt, they can slowly work their way up from just just doing Raid Finder and getting a Valor from there. It's It shouldn't be practical. It doesn't sound practical, obviously, but I'm just throwing ideas around and feel free to give your collective groans. Another route that Blizzard can adopt is the notion of raid-specific bonuses, as was mentioned during BlizzCon Line. While wearing a certain amount of raid gear, maybe you'll get a raid bonus that is far more effective than having even a good mix-up of PvP and dungeon gear. So something like this would be great for pure raiders, but not so much for people who like to dabble in different things. However, would there be a constant grumbling for a return of PvP power, maybe in the long run, players actually don't mind wrangling with multiple gear sets. One thing is for sure though, and I hope that this is addressed, Blizzard totally did it wrong by having that whole, let's have the last two bosses give higher item level gear than the rest of the raid because that ended up affecting everyone and everything. Like the dungeon people were pissed that they couldn't get 233s. Mythic Raiders were pissed that it would take them a while to get that same gear while PvPers uh, didn't have to take a while. If that gets flattened out and an item level is just, you know, smoothed out across the board, I think Blizzard can handle the complaints because season one was just plain toxic over the item level thing and, and it, in, in hindsight, it just looks totally unnecessary. But now let's talk about world content, aka anima. I totally expect a boost, at least kind of. With 9.1 and new content, the expectation is there that there will be new activities that award anima. Not a guarantee though, because Corthia, the new sort of zone that is said to be a part of the Maw, well, so far there is no anima in the Maw. So we have this kind of conflict here, but they could always say, or Blizzard could always say, oh, Corthia has plenty of anima, and now the Covenant and the Jailer are fighting for it, you know, something like that. I do expect a few things, though. We know that there's going to be a campaign. We know that there's going to be more Renown ranks, so logic dictates a familiar unlocking of quests via Renown. That means the weekly quest to gather anima will likely return, but instead of a thousand anima, the quest will ask for more. I don't know how much more, I mean, really, it doesn't matter, but to meet this higher weekly goal, we'll probably get anima from Covenant Callings, just like we did in the Shadowlands beta. It's simple as that, but this actually covers a lot. It means we get more anima, obviously. Since this bonus anima comes from the Covenant Callings, it means more activity around world content. It doesn't directly translate into doing more world quests, some of which you may or may not like, because maybe a calling takes us to Torghast, or the Maw, or to pick up a few treasures in a zone, or doing things over in Corthia. The other week, I suggested that there be a new Sanctum upgrade called the Sanctum Forge, and I like to see some form of that here. What this feature will do, this fictional feature by the way, well what it'll do is provide perks and buffs while you're in the outdoor world. Kind of like what the Anima Conductor does, but just way better. 
It'll also let you slowly upgrade the Covenant set that you received that gives you an item level kind of close to heroic raid gear, but it's going to take a lot of dedication to get. This is not a get geared quick scheme. I'd like to think that in general, Blizzard wants to take the four disciplines, raiding, PvP, Keystone Dungeons, and World Content, and design a progression path towards incremental improvements each week, with this mix of deterministic rewards and upgrades and, of course, randomness. If that was the intended goal, clearly 9.0 of Shadowlands did not meet that criteria, but moving forward, I'm excited to see what 9.1 offers. But you know what else falls under world content? That's right, fam. Player housing does fall under world content, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Jailer's House, Torghast. Five months after the launch of Shadowlands, we can look back and ask, what happens when you take an infinitely runnable thing with a weekly cap that you can complete in about an hour? You get this, basically. I don't like saying that Blizzard should have listened to me because that's very self-centered and arrogant, but I wish Blizzard would have listened to me. We know that in 9.1, Torghast is going to bring a bunch of new powers and some new floor types, AKA cell blocks. It's a safe assumption that difficulty will somehow go up. And I've already talked about increases to Soul Ash rewards, but if that's it, I'm afraid that adding 50 new cell blocks and a thousand new anima powers isn't going to make Torghast any more enjoyable. When it had the potential of being this playground, this festival of violence and nostalgia. I mean, yeah, it may take a ton of work, but it doesn't take a lot of imagination to cook up a few ideas. Like, how about boss floors? That instead of boss floors, it actually took you to an old dungeon's boss room with, with juiced up mechanics. There are a lot of old encounters we can draw on, and these can drop items from the old loot table that scale up to Shadowlands. Nothing too crazy, but you know, it's something fun to toy with. Another idea, how about at the end of a climb, there's a new vendor right at the exit who lets you spend the remaining phantasma that you have on random loot boxes. That'll totally change player behavior. Right now, we have many players that just have Soul Ash in mind when they run Torghast, and at higher gear levels, they just go for speed, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It just lacks a variety, despite the randomness of Torghast. With a Phantasma vendor at the end, you'll have reasons to make that Phantasma legendary and maybe pick up tons of bonuses so they can have as many chances to buy stuff in the end. Being able to run it infinitely necessitates the random box, but maybe a few things can be bought with a crazy amount of Phantasma too, like mounts or full transmog sets, and that'll totally encourage uh, you know, these crazy Phantasma builds. And how about the so-called Endless Run? A lot of people had different takes on it early on, myself included. It's those sorts of ideas and features that can make Torghast not just an expansion feature, but a thing to do whenever we want, even be updated to follow us into future expansions. You recall that I have an agenda, right? You know, evergreen content, being big on cosmetics to farm that we can always go back to. And yeah, that's the show. So a few weird things in today's weekly, if you haven't noticed already. One thing that I'm trying out, uh, changing the format slightly to get us right into the content in a more brisk fashion and acknowledging our wonderful viewers and sponsors at, at kind of at the tail end. I'm not super thrilled about that idea, but if it helps the channel grow and thrive even more, that means more content, more time for streaming, and someday maybe even an assistant, which sounds horrifying. I'm also releasing the weekly earlier than scheduled, although that's going to be specific for this week, because I want to have as much of the day to be with my wife as I can. A uh, quick story. Last week, we wanted to celebrate our five year anniversary at a favorite restaurant. And minutes before leaving the house, uh, we had a call. Uh, the power at the restaurant uh, went out. So our dinner plans were ruined and we just had a bunch of shots. We plan to have our revenge, but of course, not without your weekly dose of whatever this is. So I want to thank you for bearing with me this week and a huge thanks to our supporters, including our newcomers like Angela and Dermo and Dave and Forsaken Wolf. Thank you for joining us. Grats to Slims TV, the winner of two months of WoW Game Time, who said that he stared at that spot the whole time, the, the, the whole video, Elmao thanks Blizzard. See, it's 
It's a little bit cleaner this time around. And you folks were hilarious given the snarkiest disses on Blizzard in order to win the two months of game time. But hey, that's how it'd be. So Slims TV, please, in a comment below, uh, let me know what region that you're playing in, your contact information, like a Discord uh, handle thing or a battle tag, or just send me your email in the comment and I'll send you those two months straight away. I want to thank you again for joining me this week. And as a final selfish request, wish me and my wife a happy anniversary and, a, and a, I guess some well wishes too. I'm being really greedy. Just some well wishes because I just got over a migraine headache and maybe that's too much to share, but oh well. I'll see you folks next week when I bitch up a storm over professions and the big three. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click on that notification bell thingamajigger and like the video too. Last week's kind of bomb, so let's make up for it with lots of love. Until next time, folks, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.